He worked, well, Barry's been involved in some of that as well. Institute of Employment Rights um, uh, produced their manifesto a couple of years ago. We endorsed that for the last, um, it's a detailed piece of work. John, Lord, Lord John Hendy, now QC, has been working alongside Andy. So I think the work that he's done on that will set the standard now for the future. And the Labour leadership has accepted that, so I think that'll be a core part of our manifesto. I certainly hope so. Um, on the £15 an hour, um, We've had a long discussion in the trade union movement and in the party over the last 12 months or so. We need to update our policy from 19, because our aim was £10 by now. So we need to update it. And all the, all the discussions I've had is basically with particularly low-paid workers. And one of the areas that I've been talking to as much as anything is around social care, uh, where wages are pitiful, to be honest. But the responsibilities and the commitment is extraordinarily high, you know. And during the COVID crisis in my area, the social care workers, they never got the PPE in time. They're dealing with people who've been discharged from hospital with COVID. They're sitting with them as they die, those sorts of things. They deserve a, a wage increase. And in talking to people, how, how much do you need to, to survive? So that's how we arrived at £15. So a few months ago, I came out in favour of £15. Kia, actually, but I'm part of the Max Strike campaign as well. And Kia, you know, really, well, really well, really pleased. He came on one of the demonstrations in support of the 15 pounds as well. And I just thought it was taken as read that that's where we were going to. So when Andy has to go at the composite meeting, explain the Labour leadership position around 10 pounds. Um, he just felt in principle he couldn't do it. Now that's a principal decision. The one thing about Andy Macdonald, everyone will tell you, even even his opponents in Parliament and elsewhere. He's a straight, nice, honest person. Straight talking all the time, absolutely back. He's a sort of, you have complete confidence in him about you know, his dedication and commitment. So he doesn't do these things lightly. So I think he's drawn a line in the sand there. And I'm hoping conference will support the £15 an hour. And actually, if I was Keir Starmer, I'd accept the conference decision and invite Andy back into position. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tony Diver from the Telegraph. Uh, this decision for Andy McDonald to resign last night came at a difficult time for Keir Starmer. in the middle of the conference. It was just in time for the bulletins. There's a suggestion that a former staffer of yours was involved in organising the timing of that resignation. Did he resign then to cause as much damage as he could on the way out? No. This staffer issue needs to be clear about this. Andy Whitaker is my press officer for a day a week. He also works for a number of MPs, so he works directly with Andy as well. So that's that's how that arrangement goes on. Because we don't, we do, I, if I could employ Andy full time, I would, but I haven't. I can only afford one day a week. That's what he does, and he does that. I think with Absar and a couple of other MPs as well. Um, so he would have helped. He would have helped uh, Andy get the message out. But I think Andy employs him one day a week. Um, I think, Andy, the timing of it relates to the composite and the composite, when it was composite and when it was coming up as well. Um, and I, Andy, I don't think Andy was actually, he wasn't trying to make a fuss or anything like that. He made it clear he's not trying to harm a key or anything like that. But he felt he had to get out there and explain why he was standing down. Um, and that's what he did. And if you listen to what he said, um, it is about the issue itself. If there's no personal attacks on anyone from Andy. It's that not, he's not that sort of bloke. But he said that for him, it was a point of principle. He, he, he just felt he couldn't, but he couldn't go ahead with the policy. I think it's also stands. important to to remember that Andy hasn't just been concerned with employment rights since he came into no, Parliament, right? He was an employment lawyer, lawyer yeah, before yeah. that, so he's always his yeah. entire life has been fighting for rights for working people and ensuring that they get paid properly. That's what he's about. So this is, you know, the implication of your question was that. Was he doing this for some sort of political... No, th this is Andy, and, and, you know, you cut him, and it's, it's all the way through yeah, yeah. its employment rights and, and, and working people. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was quite a good time. Which one? The, uh, the one... The, the one... Of, <laughs> the, one of, the one... The one about Rachel's speech, which was good, otherwise good for that. But you made, you made reference to our WASPI proposal and says it wasn't costed. Yes, it was. We did put the cost in there. Okay. All right. Can you correct it now? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? This is a 
£58 million. Yeah, that's right. How yeah. you we were going to do additional borrowing over a five-year period, and that was the whole point. You were briefed on it at the time. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not. Put, I'm, I read it, and it's not like you to, to get that wrong, that's all. And we were honest about that. My problem was, I, you know, December 19 lesson to Keir and others is, you know, that election was called two years before it could have been. It was all Brexit, so I'm desperately trying to change the subject, and I'm throwing policy after policy out of it. WASPy, we were consulted on. I couldn't get the manifesto because we were still talking to the WASPy women about it, so we threw it out in the campaign. And the lesson I'm trying to get to Kia is all of those policies hold really well individually, yeah. but you, together, if you wrap them all up, we never had a credible narrative, so the credibility was then challenged. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying to Kia is you need a, this is the society you want to create, here's the narrative, but you need time to bed them in. And I'm saying after this election, we've got 18 months to a general election, you need at least 12 months to announce the policy, go through the detail with people, convince them of it, rebut the attacks, make sure the FT gets it reporting right, and then, <laughs> and then you go into the election. So and your question was... <laughs> <laughs> Was about whether you feel that Keir is adopting a Blair, Blairite framework approach to this conference. Yeah. Changing, changing the party rules, no. taking a fight from the left. Yeah. Some people in his team from that year. No, I do. And if, and if so, is that a bad thing? Is that a well, yeah. well, Blair won the 97 election on the basis of a 20 point lead that John Smith established early yeah. on because of the yeah. 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 crisis of the um, and remember, from 2005 onwards, they, we were losing millions of votes, and then Mandelson threw away the 2010 election. But there's nothing personal in that. <laughs> <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote a piece of observe at the weekend, um, and it basically said, what I was worried about is, if you look at the opinion polls at the moment, the Labour's position is sort of corrugated. When the Tories do screw up, when they have a, com a crisis, what happens is, is the gap between Labour and Tories narrows, but it isn't votes coming to us, it's going to don't knows, undecided. What then happens, the issue fades, and then the Tory lead is reasserted. That's my work. And then if you look at Keir's figures, they've collapsed over the recent months. And that's worrying. And I'm worried that people are going to get a settled view of him of not being the Prime Minister. I think he is. I think he could be, but he needs to mobilise the party behind him to do that. So therefore, what I said was, I think in the recent times, those people around him almost have panicked and they've reached for the Blairite playbook. playbook. And what that, the first step on that is you show you're a strong leader by attacking the party. Well, he's tried that and hasn't really worked this week because he's lost on the biggest issue. So it looked as though weak rather than strength. And that isn't the way you just show your strongest leader. Then after that, you create, you know, you put out their um, statements around motherhood and apple pie, and that's largely what the Fabian Panther was. And I was trying to say that isn't good. You can't rehash new labour. You just can't rehash. It isn't going to work for this period, and things have moved on. And I put in the article, actually, we all need a sense of humility across the party about how, therefore, we go forward and what the winning strategy would be. And we've all, got, I've, we've all got to learn lessons. We've got to learn lessons from the defeat in December 19, learn lessons from the near success in 17, learn lessons then from what happened 10, 2010 onwards. But you need a bit of humility to do that. You just can't reach back in the past to strategies that are no longer relevant and actually did, in the end, bring us into 11 years of Tory government, I'm afraid. So, no, I, I, I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of work we can do, but... The one thing uh, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to get across to them the sense of urgency, because Johnson, I think, will go in the spring of 2023. There's some Tories, as you know, on the back benches are thinking he might go sooner to avoid the COVID inquiry and the implications for him for that. So we haven't got an awful lot of time if we're going to bed these policies down and we learn the lessons from 19. Campbell Sky News. Okay. Can I just ask you, building on that? What exactly is it that you would like to see Keir Starmer do to bring the party together? Because there are some people who say that this conference is a turning point, that your wing of the party is being diminished, and that actually Keir Starmer just wants to move in a completely different direction without you in it. Well, if he does, I wish he'd have told us that when he stood for leader. Yeah. <laughs> When he stood for leader, there were two basic promises. One, I will unite the party. And um, in, 
when he was talking about United the Party, he talked about more member level engagement, not less. And the second, he put out a 10 point policy plan, which was largely based upon the last two manifestos. And that's how he got elected leader. And I welcomed him. As soon as he got, I backed Rebecca Long Bailey, but as soon as he got elected leader, I made the point, you know, we wouldn't allow him to be treated the way that Jeremy and I were, and that we, we would do everything we possibly could to support him. And that's what I've tried to do. I know it was a bit tongue in cheek about calling myself an elder statesman, but I, 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 I've done my best. But it's only up until this recent period when I saw what, what, how this conference was being planned that some of us had to speak out and say, look, the best thing for you, our best resource, the point that was made here, with greatest respect, the media actually is not the greatest of friends of the Labour Party over a period of time, particularly the written papers who are owned by people who we want to ensure they pay their taxes, etc. Et so they're not going to be particularly friendly. So the best resource that we've got to balance that up is the half a million members that we've got who are advocates on virtually every street in the country. Um, so they're the people who will be the driving force. And you need to listen to them, engage with them, ensure that they're part of the policy making process. As soon as you start diminishing their influence, you cut yourselves off, not just from our members, but from wider society. This idea that somehow our members are dramatically different from where other members of the community. In our party, we've got people, nurses and doctors, public sector workers, private sector working at Heathrow Airport. They're our membership. They are the community itself. So as soon as you start diminishing their role, actually you start diminishing the party overall. And that makes us less winnable. So that, it was just those sort of lessons that need to be learned. And also, if you're having a conference, you want to get your policies out there at this stage, what you don't want to do is spend you know, the first three days or well, even five days before that rowing about the, the rules because out there it makes you look irrelevant. You know? And the good thing about it, Andy's work on, Andy's work on the employment rights was fantastic. <coughs> Angie went out there to advocate on Saturday. Every interview she got was about the rows over the rule change. It wasn't about the policy. Lucy Powell's um, housing statement, excellent. Building upon what we did. Every time she went out, literally everything was about the rule change rather than the policy. So it undermines us getting the message across. And it's just, this is not a conflictual statement. Um, it's just about, this isn't the way in which you build the party. You give, mo mobilize, motivate, and actually then win the election because actually what this does it demotivates demoralizes our members and makes us look irrelevant Can i just forgive me forgive me i just asked you for the one thing that keir starmer could do tomorrow unite the party to unite the party well and, and, and you've just if you forgive me you've just brought up all of those rows and all of those other comments what's the one thing throwing it forward the tangible thing that could bring labor together as a party it has to be a number of things, but let me tell you one thing. If he got up tomorrow morning, or tomorrow lunchtime, whenever he speaks, but if he got up and said, I'd like to welcome Jeremy Corbyn back into the parliamentary <laughs> it, it would send a message out to our rank and file members that we are genuinely coming together and he's serious about that.